I teach English and I happen to be one of the shortlisted candidates for the novella story writing contest. The name of my story is A Refreshing Rendezvous and uh, the story is about a young corporate executive and she sets out on an adventure, adventure to an unexplored location because she is so uh, strained and tired with her job. So I hope you enjoy listening to my story. Jeeva knocked on my door at 6 a.m. Get dressed. We've got to rush. I was so dazed. I mean, you've got to be kidding me. Work, work and more work. How could one survive? Assuring Gina that I would attend the meeting, I convinced her to go before me. Having her out of the way, I had to get my life into perspective. I was so sick and tired. I needed more. Hmm. I changed, got into my car and drove to work. Soon I was outside the office block, but didn't stop there. I kept driving on as if driven by my heart. I drove straight to the train station and bought a ticket to Kendrill, a place that I heard of on the radio. I boarded the train and then, shucks, I realized that I didn't have any overnight bag, no change of clothes, no toothbrush. Hmm, what was I thinking? Anyways, the train had started. I made a mental note to pick up some things when I reached my destination. Later that night, I finally reached Kendall. It was dark and cold. It looked like a small town. Or oh, was it just a village? As I stepped out of the station, I searched for a cab. But all I could see were little bicycle wagons. After some inquiries, I got to know about this town doing their bit towards the prevention of global warming. What to do? I took a cycle wagon to a recommended homestead. Mackie's homestead was quite welcoming. A sturdy old Victorian building out in the wilderness. The walls were grey stone, with a bit of wine growing around gave an eerie yet comforting feeling. The place was run by Mrs. Fuster, an old woman who had a motherly twirl. The room that I was assigned, assigned to had a pretty Barbie ambience. There were four bed posts, strawberry curtains, frilly cushions and soft mattress. I felt like I was a part of a Barbie story. I spoke to Mrs. Fustak about my sudden plans to come to Kendrill, explaining my inabilities to carry my bare necessities. She was kind enough to arrange for a toothbrush. Mind you, it was left behind by some weary traveller. And an oversized nightgown which she assured I would go into. Finally, after some hot soup and toast, I sunk into my soft mattress in a deep slumber. The next morning, I woke up early, shot and dressed. After a quick breakfast, I decided to go shopping. I went out looking for a cycle wagon. Sadly, I was told shops were just three miles away and walking would be good. So, with no other choice, I started my march. In about 14 minutes, I came to a small busy area where I could actually count the shops. A grocery store, a garment store, a cafe and a liquor store. I walked into the garment store and luckily found a pair of jeans and a t-shirt. I changed in the, show, in the store much to the amusement of the sales girl. It was time to explore. I went to the cafe and asked about some tourist attractions. I was informed about the gold rush, a trail left behind by ancient explorers. The man at the cafe told me that Kendrick was rumoured to be a gold mine. 
Stickler Rich, an ancient explorer, had supposedly found gold here centuries ago. Since he couldn't take back all the gold, he had buried it in Kendrick. But no one knew where it was. I smelt an adventure brew. I walked up the gold rush train in search of Stickler's gold. I kept walking, but this time I was armed with supplies. Walking along, I suddenly fell in a pond of quick sand. I couldn't keep myself afloat and kept getting sucked in. Somehow I kept going further and further and finally I was deep down. I tried to open my eyes and could just see skeletons around me. There was something amiss. I remember being drawn into quicksand. But as I sunk further, it was like I was in the ocean. I began to swim and I suddenly saw a peculiar skeleton. It had on a pair of jeans and a t-shirt. I rummaged through its pocket and found a gold key. I quickly put this key in my pocket and kept swimming towards the light. I finally came ashore. Sadly, my food was soggy. I made my way to the homestead somehow. I, after I shot, I sat down to look at the gold key. I, it looked huge, but seemed old. I needed to find the lock it belonged to. That night, I had a fitful sleep only to be awoken by a strange knock on my door. At 2 a.m., I opened the door. There wasn't anyone there. Only a basket of bread. I looked at it with a greed, with greed as I was famished. I picked up a roll and wrenched it. But as I broke, another roll, a note fell off. When I read it, the note stated, His kit and task it, I sent you a bread basket. If you want the lock for your key, scurry down to the pantry. I locked my room and kept walking down the pantry. As I entered, I saw a lone candle lit in a corner. And Mrs. First Up sat there with a smile. But it was a strange smile. She beckoned me and beamed with pride, stating, I waited for you so many years. Many came before you, but they all had greed in their heart and couldn't survive the quicksand. You see, my dear, I have waited for centuries for you. Now I started praying. Technically, I was having a conversation with a dead woman. I had to be brave and asked, ma asked Madam, what is this key for? The old lady gestured to a little box. I slid the key into a, a lock on the box. And I saw another key in it. It looked regal with sapphires and emeralds. I looked up to ask the old lady what to do, but she wasn't there. As I picked up the note, I found a note that read, You've worked for years and given it your best. That's why you were put to the test. Honestly, honesty and adventure thrive on. Hence, this property belongs to you from now on. Strange, isn't it? Indeed, I was taken aback. I now owned a property all because I decided to take a few days off. The story about the treasure is still a mystery, but I now cherish what I received. Thank you everyone for listening to my